Hey everybody, uh, welcome to this impromptu uh, free coaching session. So uh, I'm on an Android phone, which means it flips these Facebook lives back to front. I can't figure out how to get it the right way. I don't think you can. So I've written that for you in, the, in, in backwards. I took the time to do that so you could see it the right way around. Uh, the rest of the stuff, I'll try and stick to diagrams so it makes sense whichever way you read it. So if you're in the Facebook group, my authority networker community, uh, I apologize that I didn't kind of make an announcement that I would do this. So perhaps there'll be some people jumping on here live. I see some of you are around already. Um, but uh, if you're catching the replay, just hit me with a hashtag replay inside of the group. And any questions that you've got, as you know, inside of this group, I'm able to support and give you the answers that you need. So feel free uh, to ask any questions that you want. So I've got one, two, three questions that I want to get through that's been asked to me by fellow network marketers like yourself. I think they'll do a lot of value for you. And who knows, maybe it's a question that you've been like, oh yeah, that, that will be useful for you to use in your business. So let's dive into these questions. Uh, I hope you're having a great day and I hope this information is useful for the results that you can get. So Mike asked me, uh, Richard, how do I get targeted traffic to my marketing? So, for example, we often do this, right, don't we? We often build like a website. So we'll put www. It's the same folders backwards, right? That's lucky. And then we all will have, you know, we'll have a video content out there. We'll maybe have podcast content out there, stuff like that. And then we're like, okay, I've, I've built this stuff. I'm putting it out there or maybe even just social media. I'm putting it out there, but it's just like it's like tumbleweeds. How am I now supposed to get the right people to this content? And he asked me specifically via social media. So the way to do this is you, you've got to think about the actual bait that you're using, number one. So for example, so for example, I see some people jumping on live. Mark's here. Hey, Mark, how's it going? You're just not so far down the road from me, are you, Mark? So the sun is shining here, so it must be shining where you are too. Right. Hopefully everybody watching from different parts of the world is having a great time as well. A beautiful weather here in the UK at the moment, which is really lucky for this time of year. It's usually rain until the summer. So you've got your content out there. How am I going to attract the right people via social media? So think about the actual topics that you're using. Like if I went out there and I said three ways any network marketer can generate leads on social media within 60 minutes. Who am I going to attract with that content? I'm going to attract a network marketer that wants to generate leads on social media fast. So I, I, can, I can determine who will then come to my content and click on that content via the title and the content that I'm delivering. Why is this important to tell you? Well, I understand why, but a lot of people, especially when I started out and you may be doing this too, we tend to dilute and like water down what we're doing. And think about this. Like, I like, I like this is meant to be a joke. I like strong juice, right? I'm not a, I like strong juice. So for me, you're probably going to fill a lot of juice before we add the water. Now, there's a certain minimum requirement for me before I won't drink it unless I'm really thirsty, right? If there's nothing available, I'll take something over the nothing. But if you're only putting a little bit of juice in, right, and then trying to dilute it, I don't want it. It's too weak, it's not attractive to me. I'm like, I'd, I'd rather just have the plain water. I'd rather just go thirsty because that tastes aw awful, right? Not awesome, I was going to say, awful. And it's the same with your marketing message. I get that you say, well, I want to attract small business owners, but I, I don't want to turn away network marketers. No, I want to I make some female-friendly content. But, oh, but what about fathers? And we have all these different things. I want to talk about, I want to be the lead generation guy. Oh, no, I don't. I want to be the recruiting guy. I want to be the scripts guy, the details guy. Oh, and then what happens is because you don't make a decision on what guy or girl you're going to be and what you're going to represent in your content and your brand, you end up trying to pitch a little bit in all of them, a little bit of juice in every jug. And now anybody that drinks it goes, that's awful. I don't want that. And it's the same with your content. So be bold. Like, you know, anything of mine, any content of mine on any platform, if you're watching it, listening it, consuming it, it's because you're a network marketer. If you're not a network marketer, you're going to watch it and go, what's that got to do with anything? Even if you're just watching this live right now, C -c content, recruiting, lead generation, what do all these terms mean? But if you're a network marketer, you go, I know exactly what those things mean and I want to improve in that. So you look at the bait that you're using. Let me try and write that backwards for those of you on video. So the bait that you're using is going to attract a certain type of person. That's number one. And then number two, we need to look at the location. We need to look at the location, okay? 
if I gave this example in the training a few years ago and it's relevant right now to this question. Imagine, let me rub this bit out for a second. So we've got that right, the bait. What you put out there, the specificity of your message will attract a specific group of people. So when you're thinking about targeted traffic, you don't want a whole bunch of people who aren't interested in the home business or looking at your home business info, then we need to reflect that with the bait that we're going to attract. Now let's take it a step further. Where we also put that bait makes a difference, right? If we were tasked with being in a fishing competition, let's say we've got a, a, there's a fishing competition in your local area, you can go in any local pond that you wish, fish there, but you've got to catch the most fish in the day, okay? And it's a very specific type of fish that they're looking for. Maybe it's a, a perch or whatever, you know, what type of fish that it may be. I don't fish, so I don't know many names. So let's say you've got a map of your area, right? And you're, and you're looking and you're saying, okay, there's a pond here, there's one there, there's one there, and there's a, there's a lake that runs through here. Okay, now let's say it was salmon. Let's say it was salmon you were trying to catch. Now I'm guessing there's a certain type of technique or bait that would work with salmon more than anybody else, other type of fish. So you would have the bait that, that salmon wanted. That's the first thing you'd do, what we just talked about. We'd have the bait. But then it's no good if, if I know enough to know that salmon go through lakes and streams and they swim down fresh water, right? It's no good if we're trying to win this competition and catch the most salmon if we go with the right bait, but we go to this still water pond here. The fish, the, i.e. your customers, your potential team members, your prospects, hanging around in there, they go look at the bait and they go, I don't, I don't like to eat that. I don't want that. It's not for me. So you've got the right bait, but you're in the wrong location. And this again is a mistake people make on social media. Okay, you've got all your friends and family as your friends on your personal profile, and then you're expecting those people to be interested in your business. That's probably not going to happen. One, you know, maybe something changes in their life, maybe they read a book, have a health scare, something like that, and they go, actually, now I need to know. So yes, you should keep people informed about what you do, but in terms of managing your expectancy and getting actual traffic and visitors to the content and everything you're putting out, it's not generally going to work unless you're consciously adding people who are in your target market. So there's some ways that you can do that to get in the right locations. Where are the locations, Richard, where I can put my bait? So what you want to look at, number one, is there can be groups, okay? Let me try and write this all backwards. Uh, I can never do an S. Is that an S? Let me look in the camera. I did it, groups. So groups is number one, okay? You can join groups where particular people are grouped together, hence the name, and that's where you can put your bait. You can hang out in there. I'm not saying spam them, market them like within an inch of their life, but if you can actually see people in there asking questions, like in a network marketing group, I could go in a network, any network marketing group right now and find somebody pitching their deal with no idea about how to, how to properly market. And I can message that person and say, hey, I noticed you're trying to pitch deal X, Y, Z. I didn't see anybody liking it. I've got a way that you can actually f get help with that and get a better method. Would you like some information on that? It's completely free. I publish an article on it, you can have a free copy. Now, four or five people might say no, but then people are going to start to say yes. So I can go in the groups and I can look for the people asking the questions that my content is answering and then put my content in there. Number two, that's the proper two, anyway. Number two, we need to look at the people that you're adding on social media. If you want more people open to, uh, let's say, for example, you're in health and wellness and you're trying to focus on personal trainers, why on earth do you keep adding a whole bunch of random people who are never going to be interested in that if you're using your profile to market your business? People say, I use Facebook for business, but then they care so much about what their friends see about what they post. It's one or the other, my friend. Like, I, I use my social media for business 90%. There's a little bit of, of personal in there, but... I don't really care about that. The friends of the of the friends I've got, I see in real life. The people I want to keep in touch with, I keep in touch with through Messenger, right? I don't need for them to see what I'm doing in my personal life. I'm doing that to inspire my audience. When I share trips and meals out and things that we've accomplished, I'm like, I want to inspire network marketers. I want to show them that, hey, this is where I came from. This is where I am right now. I want to do all that kind of thing. So I'm using it for business. Now, I don't care if I go to the school gates to pick my little girl up from school and one of the mums or the dad says, What's all this stuff you're talking about? Like, blah de blah de blah I don't want to get embarrassed about that. I'm like, oh yeah, it's, not, it's for business. Oh, it's on social media. Yeah, I know, I use social media for business. 
I don't care whether about their opinion. It doesn't pay my bills. And I'm definitely not going to shrink back my message to not ruffle any feathers of the general public who I'm not trying to help at the expense of not putting a message out there strong enough to attract other people. So make a decision on what type of people you want and then go looking for those people and adding those people so when you post, you're putting it in front of the right people. There's two ways you can do that straight away. So I hope that's helped Mike there with getting targeted traffic via social media. Now, of course, you can use ads. I mean, that's my preference simply because it's like show these people this message and, and you can test it. And I like the statistics of it. And I do well with Facebook ads. Um, but that may not be open to you with your budget, perhaps. So I wanted to give you some methods like that. The next question, Tamara. How, well, this is a big, it's like a heavy question. Tamara said, what action can I take to change the direction of my life? It's a big question. A lot of people ask this in network marketing, right? The reason we join network marketing is for often, more often than not, is we're here and we want to be there and we're fed up of just doing this. Right, we're low down here. We want to be higher up in life. We just do this wavy up and down line. A little bit better, back down. A little bit better, back down. We settle into this average, and we're not happy with it. Right? We're like, I, I want this. I thought I had this hope and this projection. I joined network marketing because I saw a way, a vehicle, a staircase, or a bridge to make this happen. Why is it not working for me? So, what I would advise you to do if you want to change the direction of your life, and especially if you're in network marketing is you want to get very, very clear on a certain number of things. You want to get clear on, on your ideal life. Like, I, I call it the magic wand question. This is Ray, Ray's question, Ray Higgins' question. He asked me this. If I had a magic wand, and I wave this magic wand, and you could do anything, be anything, do anywhere, be anywhere with anybody you choose, what would you be doing right now? I want you, whether you've got the time now or maybe a bit later, hold on to this question, make it stick in your brain, answer this at some point in the next 24 hours. You've won the lottery, more money than you know what to do with, the time is your own, you can do whatever the heck you like. What would you choose to be doing right now, with who, and why? See, because unless you get clear on the direction, you, why on earth would you have any chance of hitting a goal that doesn't even exist? You can't hit a target that's not there. And you say, oh, my goal is to feel better, do better. Yeah, but what specifically? What does it look like? I remember, I'll tell you a quick story. One of the first companies I joined, they gave a car incentive. You could qualify for a silver BMW. Now, I really fixed my eyesight on that goal. Because to get that car would mean a certain amount of income was having to come in through my team. And that would mean that a whole bunch of other goals would have, you know, bam, 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 I could achieve them all. So I had my eyes fixed on this silver BMW. And every morning, and I still visualize now, every morning I would visualize how it would feel to get this car. Like the feel of the steering wheel in my hands, where I would drive to first, who I would show, like the, the people that, that stood by me, I'd put them in the car. There's only a small number of them. They all fit in one car. But I would be able to do that and the pride that I would feel. And by the t I'd imagined it so many times. And by the time that actually happened, I qualified for that car. It was exactly everything that I thought it would be. But it felt familiar. It, it, in my brain, as opposed to being something where I was like at first, like, oh, man, this is so far away. It almost became like I was entitled to it. It's a strange sensation. I, I can't really describe it. But it felt like this is, this is going to happen. This is meant to be. And that belief, and I could taste it. I could smell the leather in the car. I could see myself in the rear view mirror. I could see my family and me in it. I, I, it was exciting to me as opposed to what it felt at first was dejection. Like, I'd be so dejected, like, oh, I'm so far away from it. All of a sudden, it felt, like, positive to me. So that's a great way, combining visualization, the magic wand question, that's the first thing you need to, need to do. What, where are you going? What is the destination? And then when you've got the destination, we need to look at the coordinates. Like, what are the coordinates? That's too long of a word for me to write backwards. <laughs> so we have the destination. We know what that looks like. So now we need a strategy to make that a reality. Just like putting in your coordinates and, you know, destination, satnav tells you where to go. Now, when we're going on satnav, if there's a road close that we know about, that's going to adjust our approach. We don't want to go down that road. There's been a lot of floods here in the UK recently. So there's certain roads that even though the satnav hadn't caught up with it, I knew from personal experience were closed. I didn't want to go down there and put myself in that uncomfortable position. I just wasn't willing to go there and risk my car getting, you know, beached 
in the blinking water. So you need to do the same thing with your strategy. Okay, you've got this coordinates, you've got the strategy, but is it one that you really want to get behind? I remember someone, I remember a conversation, I may have told you this before, I had a conversation with a top earner once, and he rang me and he said, Richard, you want to join this business? You want to get on track with it? It's, you know, that they always say, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. It's amazing. You know, it's this big. And I was like, okay, okay, chill out. He's like, if you would just put five years of your life into this plan, you can do whatever the heck you want in five years. I mean, you've heard this before, right? Everybody says this five year plan. And when I asked him some questions, I said, hang on a minute. I said, you've been in the company eight years. He said, yes. I said, and what are you doing this week? Morning, evening, afternoon meetings. I got home parties. I got this, I got that, I got the other. And I'm like, you're doing what I really don't want to do eight years later for a five year plan. How is that? How can you say that's not working for you? Like you're telling me you get freedom. You're going to be able to do what you want. But here you are, hotel, 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 families at home. When you get home, you're not really present. You're doing meetings three, four times a day and you're doing evening classes and evening. Like how, how is that? How is that like rewarding for you? How, how, I don't want to do that. And a lot of times we do this, we fall into a particular strategy and it's like wearing somebody else's shoes. Do you ever feel that way? Like, I'm supposed to do this X, Y, Z, but I really want to do A, B, C. But my upline says A, B, C is not allowed, it's naughty. You're not a child. Like, I, I came to this realisation one day, I'm like, why do I feel this pressure from the company and the top earners? Like, I'm a grown man. I have a roof to keep over my family's head. I have a wife and a daughter and aspirations and one life. My favourite quote, you, have, you only get one life to do everything you'll ever do, act accordingly. And I wasn't acting accordingly. So if you're following a strategy right now, like wearing somebody else's shoes, stop expecting the blisters to go. And even if they did, would you really want those shoes to fit? Because if you don't like them, you don't like them, you're going to have to wear them for the rest of your life. So find a strategy that is in alignment with the goals that you've got and that standard of living. See, I wanted to be able to take my little girl to school and pick her up every day. Not miss sports days, not miss any things like that. Spend quality time with her uh, every day. I didn't want to have to pick her up from school or pay somebody else to go pick her up from school and then I'm on the phone every time she's at home and I'm tapping everything every two seconds. I didn't want to do that. So why would I invest in a strategy that, 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 that that's what it's going to fulfill? So make sure you really, you know, if you want to change your life tomorrow, set where you want to get to. Set the strategy that's in alignment with that. And then the final one, the final piece of the puzzle is who do you have to become to be worthy of those results? This is a big, big, like a big thing that people miss out on. They see strategy and success as something external to them. Now, it's going to be you that accomplishes that goal, the new direction of your life. But... You're going to have to be a better version of you than you are right now to achieve your goals. Because if you were good enough, any goal you've got right now, bring it to mind, any goal right now. If you were good enough to get that goal, you would have it. It wouldn't be a goal, it would be a reality. Do you see that? I used to shoot videos over and over and over again. I can do better, I can do better, I can do better. And I used to think, I came to realisation, I was like, no Richard. You can do better when you're not on camera and you can write it all down and you can read it out like that. But the best you are right now is what you're doing on the camera. Like every time I get in front of the camera, I'd do the similar mistakes or I'd miss out what I wanted to do. Oh man, why have I done that again? And it's the same with you. The level of procrastination or belief or the level of action, your time management, your skill set, all these things are, are where you are right now. So if you're saying, oh man, you know, I can get better results when I get better at time management. No, you need to become someone that owns that and says, you know what, I'm going to do something that means that my actions make me better with my time management. So then I will have elevated my personality and my skill set and that will elevate my results. You're not going to trick nature. You're not going to fool fate. So in order for you to get to where you want to get to, you have to look at yourself tomorrow and say, who do I need to be to deserve the new direction, the new goals that I feel right now are far away from me. Very important question to sit down and answer. You know, look at different traits of your personalities. Look at the beliefs that you're holding on to. Look at the investment of your time on a day-to-day -day basis. Look at who you're surrounding yourself with and what you say about yourself when you say in your head and you say to other people. These are all very important things. So I hope that's helped you tomorrow. Last one. And if you've got any questions in the group, Feel free to ask me if you're watching the replay. Feel free to tag me in the question in the comments and I'll come back and answer them for you as well. 
Um, I've also got something I want to announce to you as well a little bit later. So Richard, so someone called Richard asked me this question. Why do so many people, to use the word detest, detest network marketing? Great question. I love to answer this question. There's a few different things and this will help you better armor yourself to the negativity that you're definitely going to receive. It'll stop you getting down in the dumps and give you a better way to uh, defend yourself. So network marketing is like anything. It involves people, right? It involves people. So when there's people in something, you get good and you get bad. Network marketing is no different. Like it blows my mind how people will, you know, they'll go, they'll go to a restaurant, right? They'll go to a restaurant and imagine this. Imagine if someone goes and has a bad meal at an Indian restaurant today. And then would they come out and go, Indian food's a scam. Indian food is a scam. I can't stand anybody that, you know, that cooks. Don't even mention Indian food to me. People are suckers that go and eat Indian. No, it's one blinking restaurant. Grow up. Like, but with network marketing, oh my word. If one of them is a scam or one of those people is, is bad, then they're all terrible. You wouldn't believe the kind of negativity that gets thrown at me on a daily basis from my content, right? You know, I saw someone, I don't even pay much attention to it. I don't really read it, but there was one I saw a few months ago and it was like, oh, you know, talking about schemes that rob people of money. I'm like, Sh you just shut up. You have no idea what you're talking about. I, mean, I don't even bother engaging. I just delete, get on with my day. But I just thought, wow, if that was like, if I was making a restaurant and I served a bad meal, I could apologize, I could move on and no one would care. But because of the business model that we're in, everything is amplified in the negative. And we just have to accept that, that things are going to be amplified in the negative, which wouldn't be anywhere else. But I like to use that example. I saw one of those things that you did, Richard, the other day was a scam got shut down. Okay, I say, okay, cool. What are you trying to, what are you trying to suggest? That I'm in a scam? Just come out and say it. Well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, you know, it's not very good. I said, you know, have you ever eaten at a restaurant? Yes. Have you ever had a great meal at a restaurant? Yes. Have you ever had a less than great meal at a restaurant? Maybe you have a bad meal at a restaurant? Yes. So are restaurants scams after you've had the bad meal? Well, no. Well, why? Because it's just one restaurant, Richard. Well, that's just one company. Other than the fact that you want it to be true because you don't have the bottle to do something with your life, what's the difference, my friend? You know, and they're like, uh, 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 and like, exactly, jog on. You know, and, and this is the same thing with people. You have to understand that they're not fulfilled in their lives. The majority of people, they work a job that pays them barely enough to get by and they do barely enough to stay employed. People around them are getting promotions that they think they should have. They're failing in most avenues of their life. They wish they were in better shape. They wish they were earning more money. They wish, 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 wish. And they never actually get around to doing something. So when you or I come along, who are actually actively doing something to progress our lives, that's very frightening for those people. Because what they usually do is they look at themselves and they say the situation, the, the location that they occupy in their life with money, with their free time, with their relationships or whatever it may be, they, they almost see like these things are all external. Like there's other influences. The world is conspiring against them. It's nothing to do with me or my habits. It's everything else. I mean, look at everybody around me. They're in the same situation. And then all of a sudden you come along and you're like, I'm going up. I've done something. I'm making a choice. Out of this circle, I, you've stepped out of the circle. You took a big step and gone, no, nope, I'm fed up with this. I'm going to do something. And you take a step. Now, what that means is they have to then turn around and go, well, oh, now I see you. And I see you as someone similar to me. And you used to be someone that made me feel comfortable about my failures. You reinforce the fact that dust their hands, it isn't me. It's the economy. It's the government. It's politics. It's blah, 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 blah. Rubbish. You build your own economy. And this is the thing. So now as opposed to reinforcing their own beliefs, now you are actually making them hold up a mirror and say to themselves, well, man, I'm choosing to stay in the circle. I'm choosing the debt or the bad relationship or the lack of time. I'm choosing these things. And think about that. When someone has to accept that, it's a very bitter pill to swallow. So when someone is faced with a choice of, try and drag you back into the circle or accept that they're choosing to stay there and they could break out if they wanted to. There's a gap they can get out if they choose. They're going to choose to try and drag you back into the circle. 
quite simply because human beings are lazy and it's easier. So what they do is they try and make out that what you're doing isn't proper. It isn't a real solution, right? It isn't a real solution. Because if they can convince themselves and hopefully you to get you back in the circle that what you're doing is wrong and it won't work and it can't work, then whew, when you step back in the circle and go, oh yeah, I didn't like it, I failed at that, they go, oh, that's why I never did it. Have you ever heard that, right? When I changed companies, when I first started joining network marketing, oh, I knew it wouldn't work. Nobody wanted to talk to me about the positives, about joining, about referrals, about none of those things. But the second they got a whiff that it wasn't going well, or I changed companies, oh, I knew it wouldn't work, that's why I didn't do it. No, you didn't do it because you lacked the backbone to either A, tell me to my face it wasn't for you, or B, take a shot and have some faith and have some bravery to change your life that you're whinging about every two damn seconds. And this is the position that people occupy. So when you can understand that, I mean, some people are just offensive, which, you know, I'll give you a, a solution to that in a second. But 95% of people who are being negative about you, I think they understand this. They just perhaps don't realise it. But now you do. It can help. I feel, I feel sorry for people when they're negative now. I used to get a bit angry and I'd end up wasting a lot of time and energy having these arguments with people. Now I, I just delete, I don't even read it because I think this person is close to my help, I can't help them and to, qu to be quite honest, I just don't want that around me and I don't agree with them and I really, number one thing is, I don't require anybody's approval or anybody's opinion to match mine for me to live my life the way I want to live it. I don't need anybody, I don't need anybody else outside of my wife and my daughter, we have our own little family circle and anybody else tells me I don't agree with what you're doing, I'm like, cool, if I wanted your opinion, I would ask for it. The reason I didn't ask for it is because I don't need it and I'm not requirement of it and I'm not interested in it. So thank you very much for feeling open enough to volunteer it, but just know that it doesn't affect me any way, shape or form. I do what I do because I'm aware enough to know myself and I surround myself with good people. I have all the help that I need, thank you. I, I, just, I just don't need their opinion. So instead of getting in a conversation with them, what's the best possible outcome? that I somehow managed to squeeze and convince them into agreeing with me and it's an agreement that I don't care about, it's only a, lose. It's only a loss for me. There's that phrase, never wrestle with a pig because you both get dirty and the pig likes it. So I have, no, I have, I have precious time. So I'm not going to invest it in that kind of conversation and you shouldn't either. Now, if somebody is, so you can feel sympathetic. Like when I see somebody behave that way, I'm like, man, that person to be so aggressive to me, who they don't even probably know, based off of a business they've never even been in or understand, they must have some serious stuff going on in their life to make them feel so negative and so frightened that somebody could possibly do something to improve their life. I feel really sorry for that person. So I can just click and get on with my day and think, man, I hope that person works out on their stuff and gets better, but that ain't my business, all right? So you can feel sympathetic. Now, if somebody, final piece of advice I'll give you, if somebody says, like, really aggressively, the only time I'll address it is if it's in front of other people. So if I'm there, right, and then there's all these people, like, watching on, and then we get somebody trying to attack, right, this is them attacking as I'm drawing it here, let's do a sad face, then because there's an audience, I will address that. Again, not because I require anybody's approval, but because I have certain standards, and one of my standards is, you know, quite bluntly, I ain't going to take no shit, I'm nobody's fool. So I'm not going to be made to look an idiot in front of anybody because of, to make this person feel better. Also, there's a teeny tiny chance that I can help educate that person and this experience can be a realisation for them and these people and I may give them some kind of benefit. And I'm willing to take that risk. You may not be, it's entirely up to you, but I am. So I've had in the past somebody going, oh, you're doing that pyramid thing, you're doing that scheme, you're doing that scam. Oh, it's horrible. Maybe they use the word that Richard did. Oh, I detest it. I say, oh, that's cool. Um, that's an interesting opinion to volunteer that I didn't ask for. Um, what makes you feel that your opinion is so important and, and what, do you really, what do you really mean by that exactly? So they're kind of like, oh, they're expect what they're expecting you to do is go oh, mm, mm, shrink away to the background. But when I come back with polite assertiveness, but I'm on the edge there, aren't I? It, it, it forces it. It's like have it back. It's like tennis. It's like, no, nope, you have it back. Now, what are they going to do? Are they going to let the ball bounce twice and lose the point or are they going to bat it back? I just, I'm curious to see. I'm like, oh, it's interesting perspective that I didn't ask for. What makes you think that you've got, you know, that, that I would want to know about that? What exactly did you mean by that? 
And they'll usually come back with, oh, well, everybody knows, or I had this friend and all the rest of it. I'm like, oh, cool. So have you have you been in um, the company? What's the company that I'm in? Have you been in that company? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm not in the company. But all those things are the same. So I go the same thing. I go, okay. So have you ever been in a restaurant? Good restaurant, bad restaurant. So is every restaurant the same? No. So why is every one of these businesses the same? Is there a good restaurant and a bad restaurant? Yes. Are there good car salesmen and bad car salesmen? Are there good and bad in every single profession and every single business on the entire planet? Is that an acceptable thing to say that not every salesman is exactly the same? Not every restaurant is exactly the same? Is that a fairly common sense thing to say? Now, if they say no, everyone's like, what? And they lose, they let the ball bounce twice. So they say, well, yeah. So why is my business any different other than the fact that you want it to be for some strange reason that I don't yet know. And I just leave it at that. And they're usually like, uh, uh, uh. and then I'll usually go on from there if they want to continue the conversation. Have you been in the business that I'm in? No. So how, how can like, could I review a restaurant that I'd never eaten at? Would that be a good review? No. So why is you, why are you reviewing what I'm doing? Well, you know, and then I'm like, oh, and another question. I didn't ask for your opinion on this. So if you don't know anything about it and you're here volunteering your opinion, why would you feel that, especially since you've never been in the business, why would you feel that your opinion is so important and you should be so rude about it? And, and I've seen people shrink, like shrink back and go, oh no. Now what did I do? For those people there, I set them straight. You don't mess with Richard and his business. He's not going to take kindly to that. Politely, I'm always polite. And if this person gets overly aggressive, I'm not going to ruin my day by going to jail or going to uh, going to prison or going to hospital by fighting somebody. No way. So I'll just go, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah you're right. I'm wrong. I apologize. Fine, no problem. I'll walk away. I'm not going to let it get to that point. But if I feel comfortable and safe and there's an audience, I'm, I'm going to correct this person by using questions, by turning it back around to them. So, and, and it works really well because I train those people to not mess with me in my business and say bad things behind my back. And also I train this person to say, you know what, I can educate you if you want, but don't ever come at me like that again. And they won't repeat that action because this can often happen in your social circle. So what I didn't want to be in the situation of was every time I went back to my friends or my social circle, me having to worry about that person showing up and trying to poke holes. So I set that person straight. And um, it's up to you if you want to or not, but that's just something else I could give you. Okay. I want to make an announcement about something you can get access to, and then I can see, I think I think I see Mark ask the question. I'll have a little scroll through. So um, you may or may not know, because I realise I've never really mentioned this in this group. I have a pre premium programme called the Home Business Accelerator, or HBA for short. Home Business Accelerator. This is a around about eight or nine week program. It is my premium program. Um, this is where I go through absolutely everything that you need to do to build a highly successful uh, network marketing business and scale up. It's also how you can do that in an automated way. I teach you to semi-automate it for a reason that I'll teach in the program and then you fully automate it. Now the reason I'm mentioning this here is I stand behind the quality of this product. So unlike everybody else, I don't ask you to pay for it before you get access. What I ask you to do is, you can watch a webinar. So you can watch a webinar, so you can see all the information about it. Then you enter your information, you enter your, your payment details, that kind of thing, but you get a seven day trial. Any time in those seven days, you say this isn't for me, there's a, there's a button right there in the members area of HBA, you can click it and you can cancel that seven day trial and you won't be charged a penny. Now, I know that that program will open your eyes to a whole new way of thinking about your network marketing business and give you a recipe on how to build success. So I'm confident enough to give you that trial and we've sold thousands of this, so it works really well. We have the highest rate of customer satisfaction in the industry. I, I, I mean, it, it's just the way I put it together, it took me months and months and months to get that program as I wanted it. Uh, multiple versions, I've really honed in and distilled down on exactly what it takes to, to be able to generate amazing results in the home business, just like I've done. It's more of a documentation process of what I did and teaching and combined. You, you perform tasks as we go through it. Um, everything is in there. I even give you the funnels that I use. I give you how to generate the traffic like I do, building a team, getting customer sales, 
automating stuff, scaling up from there, using Facebook ads, using video marketing, all of it's in there, the right mindset, the right daily routines, everything is in there step by step by step going through that there. You can have a seven day trial there. So if you want to do that, you can go to richardmathenew.com forward slash webinar. So richardmathenew.com forward slash webinar, you're able to register for the web class, you're able to see the full information, and then you'll be invited to take a seven day trial. And at the end of that trial, if you're happy, you won't have clicked the cancel button and you'll be charged whatever there's two different payment options is a paid in full and there's a payment plan to spread it out. So uh, you're able to fit it around whatever budget that you've got. So um, then you can do that decision there. OK, so that's how that works. So I just thought I'd let you know about that. because a lot of people, uh, I know that some of the top earners in this group have taken that program. And a lot of people maybe ask me questions about it. They're like, oh, in HBA, I just wonder about this. And people go, what's HBA? I've been getting some questions like, what is this premium program that you've got? You've never actually mentioned it in here. So I wanted to let you know about that, that you can get a seven day trial. So even if you just take the seven day trial, it is really worth it. Like there is a good, I open your eyes about the industry and then open your eyes about yourself. You can get that done in seven days. Just those two things, those, that awareness would be very, very useful. So richardmathew.com forward slash webinar. So let me have a look at some questions here. So Mark is asking, here we go. Uh, Mark's going through my authority affiliate profits modules. Great course, by the way. Thank you. I put a lot of time and effort into that. And you're rethinking your health and wellness business. You've just been working on targeting a specific group of people for my target market. My problem, I think, is... I've been trying to sell to the population of the UK here. <laughs> now targeting a specific group as you suggest and I've been re revamping a YouTube channel to post lots of videos in the room to Christmas. Yeah, it's a great, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to take that uh, from my training for definite, that is the right move. That is the right move, Mark. Um, we often feel like when we look at an audience, we're scared to remove any of that, aren't we? We're scared. So your network marketing company will say anybody is a prospect. Now, I'm not saying that when you're out and about at a restaurant, if I have a great meal and I really get on with the waitress, not too well because wife's watching, but I'm, I'm not going to be like, you know what, I'm not going to speak to this person about network marketing. You know, I, if I feel that she's a good waitress or it's a good waiter and I feel they will be, they could get value from what I'm doing, I may ask them, but I may not. Most of the time I don't. I'm just there to enjoy my life. So I don't feel the pressure to be like three foot rule, three foot rule. Anybody within three feet of me, I've got a prospect, prospect, prospect. It's just stressful and it ruins your life. Everywhere you go, you're like, oh, the weight of my family's financial future is resting on me, prospecting everybody I can see. That's no way to build a business. Nobody else does that. So, but because we've had that, that large net, like the whole pie is what we should be aiming for. Now you and I both know if you went and ate an entire, let's imagine this is a cherry pie, right? If you went and ate an entire, that, that's little cherry holes in it. If you went and ate an entire cherry pie, what's going to happen? I love cherry pie, but if I ate a whole one, I'm probably going to be sick, right? I, I don't want the whole pie. I, I, want the, I want the slice that I want, maybe two, right? But after that, I, that's, that's enough, right? The desire for, for, it's like when you smell food, right? Usually when you're on holiday, right, we're on vacation for American friends, we're out, we're on holiday, the three of us, my wife and I, and daughter and I, we're out walking together. If you're hungry, oh, smell that food. Beautiful, right? Oh, smell the food, right? You want to go and eat it. The second you've finished your meal and you're full, you smell the same food out, you go, oh, smell that food. Whew, you know you know what I mean, right? It, it just, it changes because of the amount that you've had and whether you've just eaten or not. And it's the same with this. You want the slice of the pie that you want. And you need to be willing to let somebody else have this slice. Richard, at the moment, I have the whole pie open to me. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because if your message isn't strong enough, if it isn't specific enough, then nobody's listening to you anyway. Because i got news for you. The way that your network marketing company is telling you to market your business doesn't work. It's not duplicatable. You can't teach someone randomness. I can't guarantee the next waitress or the thousandth waitress will join your team. You can't guarantee that. The company can't guarantee that. They just wheel the people out on stage who happen to make that work. Now, the thing is, for you in order to stand out above the crowd, because everybody is saying, you know, my health and wellness is the best quality. My travel is the cheapest. My whatever is the best. Everybody's saying that. You need to have a message very specific to stand out from the crowd. 
So that's that's what you need to do, Mark, and I'm glad that you've done that. If you're focusing very specifically on a target market, um, then you can now identify their problems. You're able to solve those problems with content, which proves to them that you know what you're talking about. And when they see you solve smaller problems in their life, they now feel you have the solution to whatever it else is that you suggest. It works really, really well. It's an ethical way of doing it. It's more interesting. It's more fun. It means you're surrounding yourself with people that actually want what you've got. And it means you can save time by not trying to offer all these people and missing the ones that actually want your help. You know, if I'm trying to serve a cherry pie to the entire population, maybe 20% don't like it, maybe 10% don't fancy it, and that leaves me with 70%. I should be focusing on that slice as opposed to everybody showing everybody and wasting my time and missing the hungry people that are passing me by and going into somebody else's team. So great question. I'm just going to refresh my, um, my computer here because sometimes my connection isn't great. Sometimes questions don't pop up. Maybe you've not asked any more questions. Maybe you have. I think that looks like those are the only couple of questions. So we'll leave it there. So any questions you've got, if you're watching the replay, hit me with a hashtag replay. I'll leave the link to the seven day trial for my HBA program. I'll leave the link to the web class, excuse me, so you can go and check that out in the comments. Any questions you've got, let me know. You know I'm happy to help. I dip in and out of here. I take 60 minutes a day, every day to answer questions from my audience. I want to make sure you get the help that you want, regardless of how successful I ever am. Um, I'm always remaining my feet on the ground and grateful for my audience. So I, I definitely want to give you some help if you need it. As always, go create a day in life that counts. Uh, always have more desires and excuses and I'll catch you uh, hopefully on that web class or wherever I see you next. Have a great day.